Our guest this weekend is Louis Rone. He's a former summer fellow here at the Mises Institute. He writes frequently for Mises.org, and he's currently a student at the Paris Institute of Political Studies. We thought we would get Louis' take on the recent terrorist attacks in Paris and find out what the mood is amongst the French people. We also discuss whether the French, like Americans after 9-11, will allow a crackdown on civil liberties in the name of fighting a war on terror. And we'll also examine the role that French history, especially in the Middle East and Africa, plays in this whole mess. So if you're interested in what's happening in France from a libertarian perspective, stay tuned for a great interview with Louis Ronet. Well, Louis Rone, welcome back to Mises Weekends. It's good to talk to you. And uh, for those who don't know, Louis spent quite a bit of time with us here in Auburn as a Mises Summer Fellow. So, Louis, how are you? Well, thank you. Uh, thank, thank you for having me. <clears throat> Give us your initial reactions. I know you're in Paris now, but you were not in Paris uh, during these recent terrorist events. Um, tell us what your reaction was, how you're feeling, and what the mood is like in, in Paris right now. Right, so I was in south of France when it happened, and uh, I just learned about all those terrorist attacks uh, the day afterwards. I mean, the day after, and um, well, it was crazy. Like, uh, I mean, the emotion was very strong among like the French people, and uh, well, it's also gener degenerated uh, very quickly uh, in the media. Uh, very quickly, uh, politicians were speaking about war, about uh, a new patriot act or a French style patriot act. Uh, almost immediately, the French president declared the state of emergency, uh, and um, well, the, um, the climate still very tense. Do you know whether French borders are still restricted or closed? Oh yes, right. They they are still closed. Hmm. That's that's an an a staggering thing to think about. It's apparently this hasn't occurred since WW two. Um, so it, it's quite a week in France. How do you think most people have reacted to Hollande's? You know, he used the word war, and he's immediately started uh, ramping up uh, bombing attacks in Syria. Do you think the average person in France supports this, or or has some reservations about it? Well, there was a poll uh, about uh, would you prefer more liberty or more security? And 84% uh, of uh, French uh, voters said they preferred more security. Of course, the, the poll is in itself uh, badly done because like, you, can't, you can't oppose security and liberty. Uh, it's the same thing in, in a way. Um, like liberty is also security from the government and from migration. Uh, what is striking is the state completely failed to protect us. I, I see it that way. I mean, 129 uh, person killed, more than uh, 300 injured. Uh, that's terrible. And the terrorists just uh, like attacked at different places in Paris. So it's a complete failure of... Uh, French intelligence um, services and protection services, but uh, instead of criticizing criticizing the the French secret service and um, well the police, what happened is they said no, there was no failure at all, and uh, it, it's just that we can't control everything, of course, and uh, it's not a blowback uh, because of our foreign policy in uh, Syria or in the Middle East. So, and j before they knew anything about who committed those terrorist uh, acts, they were already speaking about war. So this is their objective, uh, their, their aim to, to just um, um, exploit this opportunity to go and make war. Well, I have to say, from reading what we read in the papers, it sounds very much like the atmosphere is similar to the atmosphere in the U.S. after the 9-11 attacks. Of course, no one in government lost their job. Uh, no real inquiry was ever made into the intelligence failures or anything else. And what strikes me is that when you're talking about soft targets like a nightclub or a concert venue, you know, absent some sort of really totalitarian police state where you search everybody and have checkpoints everywhere, mm -hmm. 
it's very you know mil increasing military spending can do nothing to make you safer domestically would you agree right i mean i was in the subway uh well yesterday and i just crossed by there were like nine uh soldiers but you can think 20 minutes and invent a plausible way to commit a terrorist attack even if those soldiers are here they are not making you safer they are just making you feel safer but uh so i think also a good point will be that they uh, after charlie hebdo after uh, past january the terrorist attack in paris uh they increased uh like security, uh, security. I mean, uh, government spending in uh, like security uh, uh, services. Um, in, in there were a new law um, for um, well mass surveillance. Basically, it didn't make us safer, but it made some uh, like politicians safer. Like the parliaments, it's almost impossible to attack. So what they do is since. Uh, many targets are, are overprotected. They just attack civilians and innocent people because they can't uh, reach, they can't kill a, a politician or journalists or those sort of people. It's too hard now to do. Well, I have read some people criticizing French gun laws. Can you tell us a little bit about what gun laws are in France? Are they different, for instance, in, in the countryside? Do people own hunting rifles, that sort of thing? Um, and what's your understanding of b basic French gun laws? Okay, so French gun laws are what we call no issue. So basically, it's illegal, except if you have a permit, but it's, well, it's not that hard to have, but they don't like uh, guns for um, civilians. And you can you can't uh, carry a gun uh, in the street or uh, like in public spaces. That's very clear. The funny thing is that the government, the socialist government, uh, tried to to make uh, gun laws even worse, like even uh, uh, um, anti-gun. Now I think the, the French people is questioning gun laws after this terrorist attack. And I have a friend who as a, a Facebook page about the, the right to bear arms, and uh, he quadrupled he quadrupled his uh, his uh, fan on Facebook, and uh, I think his two last post got uh, almost two point five million views. So I think people start to question that. Now I don't. I will not say that uh, it, uh, like the right to bear arms will have. Uh, um, um, deterred terrorist attacks. Uh, I'm not sure that will have happened, but uh, clearly what uh, people feel in France is that they are defenseless. The government is not protecting them, but they can't even protect themselves. And there, are, there is also a paradox that French people are really anti-guns. Uh, they are anti- uh, um, yeah, they are really for strict gun laws, but at the same time, uh, you are the the, um, the armories just sell a lot of guns uh, since the terrorist attack. Like all, many Frenchmen try to have a handgun and to buy handguns, etc., to defend themselves. Do you think the reaction to the attacks? Uh differs across France. You know, in America, we talk about two Americas. There's red state America and blue state America. And those two sides tend to have very different views of things like, for instance, the war on terror. Um, is there a real split in, in France today? Are, are Parisians, do, do Parisians generally see politics, French politics, very differently than rural French? Well, there is a difference, but not that much uh, because France is very centralized. Uh, basically, Almost everything happens in Paris, so uh, I, I don't think there is a big split between uh, like rural France and Paris. Well, now for to come back quickly to guns. In fact, many French uh, households have guns. Like I think it's thirty percent. 
but it's mainly for hunting and in rural areas, not that much in cities. France has one of the largest military budgets of any country on earth. Uh, it's really in the top five or six. Yeah, right. and, and in Europe, it only lags slightly behind the UK. You know, in, in, the, in the West, we tend to think of Europe and especially France as being these socialist welfare states, and they can get away with it because NATO protects them, which is really, NATO is really America. And, and they don't have to spend a lot of money on defense. But it really, it looks like France is very much like the U.S. in that it's trying to have both a big welfare state and a big military complex. The military shrinks those past few years uh, because it's easier to reduce the military budgets than the welfare state budgets in France. But uh, however, the paradox is the French government's is really interventionist. And that's, um, I, I think, because we were a huge colonial power. And so we still have many uh, soldiers in Africa. Uh, what's interesting, too, is that we are like part, partly responsible for what happens in Syria. Uh, I mean, Syria was a French protectorate uh, before, I think, 1945. And uh, there, there were really strong relations between uh, the Syrian regime and the French regime. I, in fact, a few years ago, uh, Bashar el-Assad was invited to the 14th of July in Paris. And uh, from one day to another, they just stopped uh, supporting him and supporting his regime. And uh, so, I mean, now what uh, the French government is doing is uh, a strike in in uh, Syria. Um, also, another thing was uh, Iran, which is it's maybe the country the most opposed to ISIS in the region. France was uh, the country with strict, strictest uh, uh, commercial embargo uh, directed to Iran. I mean, they, they were really uh, severe against Iran. I mean, and they are not the nice guys, <laughs> obviously, Iran, but uh, we have our share of responsibility for what happens in the Middle East right now and the mess it is. And that explains also why France is uh, um, targeting France in particular. France has a long history in Africa and in the Middle East, a, a lengthy war in Algeria, for example. Uh, do you think that there's still a complex amongst the French, a, a sort of a guilt complex relating to their colonial period? Do you think that that, that, that colonialism still uh, informs people's opinions about uh, what France ought to be doing today in terms of fighting ISIS or accepting refugees or anything else? Okay, so what's a what France did in Algeria was really, really bad, awful. And uh, the state of emergency we have uh, today, uh, it's the first one since the war in Algeria. So that's um, a fact we have to remember. But uh, I think there are, there are two camps. Those who are maybe nostalgic uh, of the colonial area, but there are, uh, this group is getting smaller and smaller because often it's like, my grandparents, for example. And uh, the groups which use this colonial period to uh, just create guilt and say, well, look, we, we have to, to give uh, to those people. We have to, to give them money and uh, put them under welfare uh, just because uh, we were unfair to them. It also requires young people today to pay for the sins of the past. So... Um, it's a very tough question because we certainly want to understand uh, why people seem to hate countries in the West, but we also don't want to, um, you know, in, keep this conflict going forever and ever amongst the younger generations. Uh, let me ask you this in closing. Do you think French people blame America? And, and maybe to a lesser extent, do they blame Sarkozy or Chirac for following America into this latest uh, Gulf War in Iraq and Afghanistan, and which which now, depending on one, one's point of view, is causing blowback? Do, do, uh, do Americans, do French blame America at all for this mess in the Middle East? Well, maybe some, but I don't think so. But what's very clear today is so, I mean, every politician virtually are warmongers and they support war. 
um, I have the words of the Prime Minister, uh, Manuel Valls, and uh, he's saying, he said just a few days ago, because we are at war, we take exceptional measures. We must annihilate the enemies of the Republic, expel all these radical imams, deprive of citizenship those who violate the soul of France. I predict, um, I predict a conflict that will last for months, per, perhaps for years. I mean, and Nicolas Sarkozy, the former uh, president, said that we are in a total war. In a total war, is that, what does that mean? We are definitely not in a total war. There, 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 is, there is maybe only one exception. It's Dominique de Villepin. If you remember, he was the prime minister uh, when America went to Iraq. And he's the one who said, no, France is not going to Iraq. We are not doing this. We are not following you. And so he's maybe the only one who is kind of anti-war, even if he is not libertarian. Uh, but all the others, it's just crazy. It's, I think 12 uh, members of parliament uh, a few days ago um, said we should, because the government should control the press. Uh, so, those sort of things. It's, it's a, you have maybe like five or 10 bad ideas a day. Uh, some people are up speaking about the draft. Uh, some people are saying, look, uh, uh, the terrorists, they were consuming uh, um, weed, and so we should uh, reinforce the war on drugs. Uh, some of those are saying, oh, look, they, are, they want to get a nuclear weapon, a weapon, so we have to go there and fight them. So that's, I mean, you have all those crazy explanations about what happens, and uh, it's becoming completely irrational because... Well, it's just you have fear, and so they are exploiting. When you turned 18, Louis, did you have to sign up for some sort of draft service in case uh, a draft was ever called? No, absolutely not. No, no, we don't. We still do that in the United States today. 18-year-old young men and now 18-year-old young women are required to register with the Selective Service um, in case we ever have a draft. So it's not that far-fetched. And I will say this, Louis, I'm sure if you had polled Americans in the days and weeks following the 9-11 terror attacks, a similar number, 80-some percent, would have said we need more security and not more liberty. So I certainly hope that France does not make the same errors that the United States did uh, in, in that period. That And I hope that the French learn something from it. But we very much appreciate your time and your perspective, and we look forward to hearing and seeing more of you in, in Auburn next year. So, Louis, thank you for your time, and ladies and gentlemen, have a great weekend.